Hello and welcome to another segment of Dr. K's Entrepreneurial Mind. I'm Dr. Don Karatko. I head up the entrepreneurship program at the Kelly School of Business at Indiana University. My nickname for the last 30 years has been Dr. K, hence the name of our show, Dr. K's Entrepreneurial Mind. Uh, in this uh, particular segment, we've got uh, two special guests. Uh, we have with us Professor Mark Long, and Mark is, uh, I would say, probably one of the world's experts in the area of business incubation and the startup of firms, new nascent firms. And uh, we're very fortunate to have him on our faculty. So, Mark, welcome to the show today. Thank you, Great Dr. to have you here. Dave. And uh, also a very special guest is one of the graduates of our entrepreneurship program, Derek Paquet. And uh, Derek is what we call one of our young entrepreneur superstars because with his business, Coat Checks, that you're going to hear about today, uh, he was able to bring this to fruition and actually star in the show Shark Tank. So we're going to get to that a little bit later in the show. So, Derek, welcome. Thanks for the intro, man. Really great to have you here. So uh, let me begin uh, as we, we start this and, and kind of get rolling right away with you, Derek. Um, can you tell the audience a little bit about what Coat Checks is, which is your business? What is that, and how did it really get started? Well, Coat Checks is uh, sort of my expansion plan to a business I started here at IU while I was a student called the Hoosier Coat Check. It was a way for me to be able to... Um, get this mobile code checking service that I started here and expand it into areas where I wasn't able to be. I needed equipment, mobile equipment, and a system to be able to manage the workforce and to sort of be able to better manage the events. What gave you the idea for checking coats? Uh, I mean, how did that kind of start? Yeah, it was, um, it was one of those things where I would go out to the bars and nightclubs here in town and... There just to visit, of course. Just to visit, <laughs> just, to, just to scope out. I never stay, you know, honestly. But uh, it was one of those choices I usually had to make where... Was it so cold that I'd have to wear a jacket out? Or was it one of those nights where I, I could get away with not wearing it, freeze in line for 20 seconds, 20 minutes, whatever the time mm -hmm. was, and then go in and have a good time? I'm a pretty skinny guy, so I usually wore my coat out. <laughs> and um, there was never any place to put it because these bars are really packed. If you were dancing, you didn't want to have to hold on to it. So I would be one of those guys who would hide it somewhere in, in, in these venues. And um, one day I hit it. Uh, it was actually underneath a present, an uh, empty present box behind a Christmas tree at a venue, thinking it'd be safe. And when I came back in the night to pick it up, it was gone. Wow. And it was a brand new coat. I was really upset that I had lost it. And I thought back to um, back when I was in D.C. that when I would go out, they'd have coat checks. And mm -hmm. I just wondered why they didn't have coat checks here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the way I started was I just sort of went up to the venue owners and asked them, how come you guys don't have coat checks and they told me things from, it was too much of a liability. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't have the space or the equipment. Um, they tried it before, but it was too much of a mess. And so I, the more I thought about it and sort of the opportunity in how much money it can make, because mm -hmm. it's, it's a service business where mm -hmm. we're really not selling anything. We're just holding on to items right. and taking money for holding on to those items for a period of time. I thought that if I just checked in, you know, maybe four items an hour, I was making 12 bucks, and as a college student, it's a lot of money. <laughs> right, yeah. So um, I went out, and yeah, they, you know, I told them, hey, do you mind if I bring in a station when you need it, take it out when you don't, and start the sort of mobile coat checking business? I'll give you a split of revenue. You'll get a paycheck every other week for giving me a little space, mm -hmm. and um, I think I could do a really good service for you guys. And That's really neat. The venues liked it. We got, we got in here in, in Bloomington at some of the venues, and... Mm -hmm. I think in our first five months, we had about 16 student employees, and we made $50,000. That's fantastic. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, like the, the true entrepreneur, you know, you simply witnessed a need that was there and, and came up and you know, solved the problem with, you know, here's the solution we're going to come with. A very basic problem, yeah. That was... You know, and I know the idea, uh, so I'm, I'm obviously privy as a professor here to know that you took the idea into our senior class called the Spine Sweat Experience. And before we get to that, I want to I wanna turn to Professor Long. And uh, Mark asked you to tell the audience a little bit about what the Spine Sweat Experience is really all about. Sure, Dr. K. Uh, the Spine Sweat Experience course is one Derek went through, and uh, I think he'll certainly testify to the fact that it does make your spine sweat. That's uh, <laughs> where the name came from. W409, a uh, course that you designed when you were at Ball State, and now at IU we've developed it further. It's a course where students take their business ideas, like Derek's coat check business, write a business plan around it, and at the end of the course, present that business plan to a group of venture capital investors. And those investors decide, do we give them a thumbs up and invest in that business plan and that business concept and give them an A in the course, move them on, or do we give them a thumbs down and do they fail the course and not graduate? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of risk on the line. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, kind of the ultimate. Absolutely. But the true feeling of an entrepreneur. Absolutely. You're, you're it's like real life. Rolling the dice, you know. No question about okay. it. As I, I should tell the audience, the uh, the nickname Spine Sweat came 
um, many, many years ago, 30 years ago from my father, longtime Chicago entrepreneur, uh, when I was telling him about this idea of developing courses in entrepreneurship. And, and as Mark knows the story, Derek, uh, my dad had said to me, you know, that's all well and good, but until and unless a student goes to bed at night and feel their spine sweat, <laughs> I'm not sure they know the feeling of an entrepreneur. And I always, you know, capture that in my memory. And so we nicknamed this course the Spine Sweat Experience because it really captured what my dad was talking about. So I know I felt that the last two weeks before I went up in front of those investors. That was for sure. <laughs> So tell, yeah, tell me, uh, let's switch over from Professor Long to you as far as the experience, you, the spine sweat experience itself. Yeah. How did you feel going into that? Well, it was one of those things, I, coming into the school, I heard about the class, and I'm, I'm from the D.C. area, mm -hmm. and I always knew I wanted to go into business on my own. And, you know, hearing about that, I think that was the first article I read about the entrepreneurship mm -hmm. program here was the spine and sweat experience. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was just such a cool way to just be able to, for me to know before I go out in the real world if I was ready. Mm -hmm. And so I knew from day one that I wanted to take that course my senior year. Mm -hmm. and um, But it was still sort of nerve-wracking when I was applying to just think about that. that if I didn't finish that course, <laughs> I was going to graduate with all my friends. Going through it, how did you feel about the, the evaluators, the way they tested you, the way they pushed you and stuff? Well, just, I mean, working with, you mean the judges or, yeah. or Mark? Uh, no, our actual, uh, our, the whole program. Our, our evaluators that day when you were in the Spine Sweat Experience. Oh, when I was in it, I yeah. just, um, you know, I, I was as prepared as I could be with the mm -hmm. plan. And, you know, I thought through what kind of questions they could ask me, but um, they were throwing some, some, you know, wild cards that I just didn't even think about, which mm -hmm. was a great learning experience because I had to think on the fly. You can prepare as much as you can, but you got to be ready in there to, you know, answer questions that you're not ready for, and that really prepared me for real time. How did, uh, Professor Long, back to you, how did you, uh, getting Derek ready for the course, um, what what struck you about his idea? Did you feel he was ready? How, how did that, that day, you know, what was going through your mind that day? <laughs> well, certainly there's nothing like having a student who has actually applied their idea like Derek did to a real life situation, to actually taking the idea and not just being theoretical, but like Derek did, taking it out to the bars. Uh, he actually came to me and asked me for some real contracts, some uh, real indemnification mm -hmm. clauses, some things that would protect his business. Mm -hmm. So Derek was one of those individuals who actually had an applied technology, an applied practice to his experience. That was terrific. I felt like he was one of the people who was probably uh, more ready, I guess you right. would say, than anyone else. However, as we take them through the course and prepare them in writing a good business plan, putting together a good pitch, practicing that pitch, asking them hard questions, you can never really be completely ready, even though we're trying to get them ready for real life situations, because you never know what an investor is going to throw at you. Well, that's terrific. Uh, obviously, the course uh, led you to launch the business, and and now uh, a, a TV celebrity, the uh, wildly popular ABC series Shark Tank, uh, contacted you. And t tell us about how that all came about, that you actually were able to make an appearance on Shark Tank. It was, a, it, yeah, it was, it was sort of one of those things where I was just on Twitter one day, and I saw <clears throat> that, hey, uh, there's applications for season four are out. They said so far over 20,000 people had applied. I'm like, well, there's no shot here, but let's just see what the application is. And I opened it up, and it was, it was you know, one simple question. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to be on Shark Tank? Or why should we, you know, mm -hmm. what, what do you want to pitch on Shark Tank? I think it was two questions. Why do you want to be on, mm -hmm. and what are you going to pitch? Right. And I, you know, didn't want to spend a lot of time on it because, ah, oh, 20,000 people applied. So I wanted to kind of make it funny. You know, I, I said, hi, my name's Derek Paquet. I went to Indiana University, and I'm a lot like Mark Cuban. So I compared my, <laughs> Very you know, good. we both started business when we were young. Um, Very good. You know, and then I told them about what my business was. I made a, you know, I started a business that made 50000 the first five months, and I really want to expand it. And I had this cool technology and this cool equipment that will allow me to do so. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was sort of weird. I was at a trade show in Chicago um, checking out parts for my, for my racks, and my business phone started ringing, and it was a call from Santa Monica, California. And I was, like, puzzled. I'm like, why is someone from Santa Monica calling about co-check services. Isn't it like 75 degrees there year round? <laughs> so but I, I was so curious. I answered the call. I'm like, hello, this is Derek with uh, co-checks. And they go, hi, uh, this is um, the producer uh, of Shark Tank. We really liked your, your, um, you know, your application. And we, we, you know, out of thousands of people, we've narrowed it down to a couple hundred. And we really would like for you to fill out our real application, mm. which was a 40 page questionnaire oh. and a five minute video okay. background checks. It was the real deal. Oh. Did all that. They came back to me about another two weeks later and asked me to come out. Fantastic. Pitch, so. Fantastic. 
For so long, how did you feel when you first heard that he was going to go on Shark Tank? Well, I think I was probably as excited as he was <laughs> in the beginning because it certainly shows that um, uh, there are great successes out of our program. Uh, there are other students who haven't been on Shark Tank or have been on national mm -hmm. news, but we have many, many students who have uh, spawned successful businesses that uh, are uh, currently in business and are prosperous and are making money. Uh, but uh, Derek is certainly a tremendous validation, I think, of the uh, spine sweat course, how it works, what it does, how it's supposed to prepare you for real life. And uh, I was uh, keeping my fingers crossed that uh, <laughs> we had prepared him for the worst or the best. Uh -huh. And uh, it was a tremendous effort, uh, tremendous exposure for the program. But even more, it was a great validation of his success and what he's done to start Absolutely. a tremendous business that I think he's going to continue to show great success in. Yeah, there's no question. I, I, and I think the audience should know now, because I'm sure they're sitting out there saying, so he's checking coats. Yeah. So tell us now about the technology you're using and why this is really advanced way beyond, you know, the early days of the idea. Yeah. So coat checking is what I knew. It's, mm -hmm. it's what I've made money from. But I realized that there's, a, there's this uh, problem in this sort of situation, and it's called a bailment situation. It's when you hand over belonging to someone to hold on to, mm -hmm. and then uh, get it, getting it back. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the systems out there are um, very traditional, haven't been changed in over 100 years. The way they do it is they give you a ticket, mm -hmm. and they hope that you give them the same ticket back, and they just trust that you're the person that came and picked it up. They have no verification. And I had tons of problems in this coat checking with people coming up, losing their tickets, not right. being able to find their coat because we'd have hundreds of items checked in. Sure. And it, it, it'd be you know, a waste of time for my employees to have to spend you know, 10 to 15 minutes just giving one person their coat back. Right. And, but on top of that is if you know, I had to trust them. Our attendants had to trust the employees, right. and I had to trust my attendants that they were actually making sure that they you know, were asking the right types of questions to get it back. And in business, a trust game between people you don't know and strangers is never mm -hmm. a good idea. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, for me, it was sort of, I saw this, it's, this is not just coat checking, this is in valet, it's the same situation with your car, it's with your children and childcare, mm -hmm. with rental cars. I mean, it goes the opposite way, when a business person is giving something of theirs to a customer. Sure. You know, so it sure. goes both ways, rental services, mm -hmm. um, even things like um, storing, storing items in uh, storage, you know, mm -hmm. there's ways that we can allow for new businesses to be created. So how did your technology answer that issue? I, I mean, okay. I hear you that that's the that's a problem. Yeah. Uncle. So what we, was your technology? We simply it's very simple. We simply grab your name, uh -huh. grab your phone number, and grab your picture simultaneously while we're taking a picture of your belonging of your uh -huh. item. So we use QR codes mm -hmm. with that. You know, the QR codes are related to a number that your item is being checked in as. So it, it gives it an ID right. as well as giving you an ID, and your ID is your phone number. Uh -huh. And this way, at the end of the night our attendants, anyone's working, is able to see a picture of you and your belonging. And if you forget to pick it up, we now have contact information to make sure you know how you can get it. Fantastic. And it's, it's that simple, but it's, it's a way to collect some, some great data and right. you know, the data side of it, too, that now we're able to use this data to help our venues understanding traffic. Yeah. You know, they can see when people are coming and going, new customers versus ex existing customers, but it's also a way to initially contact with them. So mm -hmm. they can reach out to them, hey, follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook. Um, would you like to know what kind of events are going on? We could teach you the text throughout the night. So it's a way to connect with customers that before was just a you know was just a ticket. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's what these venue owners and these event planners find very valuable with the code checking, past just the security right. and the liability <clears throat> right. that's you know that's right. eliminated. Have you beta tested the the actual technology? Has it? Yes. So we've actually launched it now in. In venues. Oh, fantastic. So we are now testing it in the actual venues to, to really work out the bugs, really sort of evaluate it compared to our ticketed system in, in terms of efficiency, mm -hmm. as well as just grabbing reactions from the demographics, seeing, you know, the younger demographics, how they um, work with it compared to the older, and, and just to figure out the best ways to use it. Mm -hmm. But it's out there now. We're testing it in real time. It's going to be here in Bloomington. We're bringing it out to venues today. Um, for them Fantastic. to tell us how many they want. Um, That's really great. Going back in our old venue, so it's really exciting. Professor Long, what do you think uh, of this the, this expansion of the technology? What, did, what was your take on that now? I, I think it's a, a tremendous progression that's sort of uh, a natural progression that I would expect. Uh, Derek is one of those people that's never going to settle mm -hmm. for stopping. He's going to keep moving. He's going to keep making further progressions. Uh, the next thing I expect to see is the European operation of Kochek set up and the international uh, aspects of that, <laughs> Derek. Uh, Give me a year. <laughs> sure, but, that's great. Uh, 
Uh, I expected to see him continue to move. Uh, I remember when he first started uh, here with uh, just setting up a, a basic corner mm -hmm. uh, in a, a local establishment mm -hmm. uh, with tickets that he was printing and handing <laughs> out uh, to people. And uh, it's one of those things where an entrepreneur always sees a better way right. and makes those steps and sometimes leaps mm -hmm. to constantly pursuing better technology, uh, better methods, and better ways, and also more money. Mm -hmm. well and the appearance on Shark Tank uh, on ABC uh, has, has led to some really great things. Can you just tell us a few nice things that have happened since that, that appearance? Absolutely. Um, so we have three channels we're looking to expand in. The event planning industry, where mm -hmm. we service events, big events that before didn't know who to call to get a code check in. Right. We also want to replace existing venues, their ticketed systems with ticket lists, and as well as give entrepreneurs the opportunity to do what I did. And we put forms on our site, and we've had hundreds and hundreds of people respond asking how do I get a, a code check system, how do I get, how do I run a code check service in my area, I think this can make a lot of money here, um, you know, I have an event, can I get code checks in, so just the opportunities alone is, is amazing, but on top of that, now there's brand recognition, so before when someone might have been hesitant to try out a code check, right. now they might be intrigued to see what code checks is all about when they see it at a venue near them, and that's what I wanted going on the show, was just to be able to tell people my story, right. show them my product, and get my brand out there. Which you did do, and that's really fantastic. Did you, um, the experience on Shark Tank, do you think the spine sweat experience here at Indiana University prepared you? It over-prepared me. I mean, just, because I had nothing to lose going into, going into the show. I mean, I already, I had cash on hand, I had uh, a great product, and so I was just looking for strategic partners. Whereas with this class, this my my graduation was on the line, mm -hmm. and um, you know the prepper. I I I was way. This is way before. You know that class was. I I did it for coat checks. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, allowing me to really test it out. You know in a in a pitch form. Right. You know sort of the beginning stages of this business and allowing me to figure out what needed to be done to get it. You know into real life into where real big money was going to be coming at me. And I think just the questions that they asked me. Oh, uh, were much were, were much more directly, uh -huh. you know, related to where I needed to go. Whereas these questions were more just trying to figure out what my product was about. Right. And so, right. It, it gave me a lot of strong direction after going through that class to know what I needed to do to be able to scale this. Going into that, going into that class, I was trying to think about how I could just get the equipment and put them everywhere and manage. I didn't even think about a system. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think that I needed a management system. And those, the types of questions Mark asked me during the class um, about how I was going to scale this, the type of right. questions they asked, or where was the value, why can't someone mm -hmm. just replicate this, were questions I didn't really think about because I was already wrapped up with how much money it was making just the way it was. Right. So they really prepared me to think outside my little box mm -hmm. of, oh, I'm making all this great money as a college student. How do, <laughs> I, how do I make this something that everyone can use and a lot of people can um, you know, make money off of and that was really a, a, an eye-opener for me going through that class. Well, we're certainly proud of you, Thank Eric. You. you did a great job not only here at Indiana, but now as you take this out to greater heights and, uh, and greater successes, because we know you're going to be successful with this, this whole concept. So, I really um, appreciate it. I, I would agree. Wouldn't you agree, Professor Absolutely. Long? This is, this is one young man that uh, certainly has made Indiana University proud and our program very proud as a great exemplification of uh, the spine sweat experience and how it prepared you to be on ABC Shark Tank, which is <laughs> really kind of neat. So. Uh, any final comments for our young entrepreneurs, Derek, that you'd say to them? Yeah, I would just say um, if you have a great idea, go out and try it. Um, you know, there's just so far you can go thinking about it. It's really important to go out there, ask questions, and just sort of test the waters out because no, no idea is a great idea until it's implemented. And, you know, I just, I just encourage everyone out there to just any, any type of idea you have, just test the waters out. Go out and do something as opposed to just thinking about it internally. That's great. Great advice. Thank you. Great advice from a, an a entrepreneur who is executing and Thank doing you. it. So that's great. We're, we're proud of you, Derek. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining me on the show. Anytime. Great to have you here. And Professor Long, thank you for joining me. Thank you. And all the work you do with the Spine Sweat course and in and nice developing our young entrepreneurs, which thank is you. absolutely fantastic. So, And thank all of you for joining us uh, for this special segment. I hope you've enjoyed it, seeing one of our very successful young entrepreneurs, uh, Derek Paquet, who's done a fantastic job with Coat Checks. And keep that in mind, when you go to your next venue, look for Coat Checks, because they'll be the ones taking care of your coat. And thank you all for joining us on this segment of Dr. K's Entrepreneurial Mind.